2015 was the deadliest year on record for migrants and refugees attempting to get into Europe. Over 3,700 people died, the majority on sea crossings between Libya and Italy or Turkey and Greece. The following film was first broadcast in 2007, well before today's conflicts in the Middle East. Then many Europe-bound migrants were using another, less publicized route to a better life. This is the southernmost outpost of Fortress Europe. Yet it's on mainland Africa, opposite the Straits of Gibraltar. The Mediterranean enclave of Ceuta is one of the last vestiges of Spanish rule in northern Morocco. It's been European for more than 500 years, and Madrid insists it will never relinquish control. The recent visit by the Spanish monarch highlighted the ongoing tension over the status and future of Ceuta. Spain has also cordoned it off, prompting comparison with another war in another place. Sí, yo vivía en 20 años en una situación eh, parecida en Alemania del Este. Y cuando yo veo esto, me recuerda muchísimo a, al muro de Berlín. The crossing between Morocco and Spain has become a magnet for tens of thousands of workers and migrants, legal and illegal. For this is the back door into the prosperous European Union and the hope of a better economic future. But within the town of Ceuta is another divide, a social division that is religious and economic, between the wealthy Christian Spaniards and their poorer Muslim compatriots of Moroccan descent. The town of Ceuta is a geographical anomaly, part of mainland Africa, but belonging to Europe. Given its geographical position, it's no wonder that one of the foremost map makers of the ancient world was born here in 1099. Al Idrisi's maps helped make possible the great voyages of discovery, which led to colonization, and as in the case of Ceuta, the presence of Europe in Africa. Once again, economic opportunism is the prime mover, but now the migration is in the opposite direction, as those who were formerly colonized head north, driven by war, want, and oppression, ending up here at the gate of Europe. I think this is a problem that affects everyone in this moment. En Ceuta lo que ocurre es que eh, se concentra toda esta problemática en muy pocos kilómetros cuadrados. What the migrants find is a double fence. Most of it paid for by the European Union. Four meters high, six kilometers long. Eh, por lo tanto, la, la razón de ser de esa de esa región que es la única posibilidad que se ha encontrado efectiva de ordenar de algún modo la inmigración ilegal. What the migrants also find is a holding center before their status as refugees is decided, and that typically takes months. It's not a prison, but there are constraints. I am called Karim Karbaj. I am a Tunisian. I came here in September. It was a long story. Genre à partir d'Algérie, Maroc, ici. Alors quand j'étais venu ici le premier temps, c'était très difficile. Mais malheureusement, il y a des policiers qui m'aident ici. Ils m'ont fait carte. 
de te raccrocher à Souta, cette cité. Mais la situation ici, c'est très difficile parce que euh, le peuple ici, on ne peut pas travailler, on ne peut rien faire. C'est mieux que dormir et manger et attendre quelque chose de nouvel, de Madrid, l'Asie. But those who arrive often come from far further afield, from other continents even. I came here from India, Kashmir, because of economical problem and war in India, you know? And I took uh, three months. There are people who are allowed into Sota from Africa, and it takes them only a few minutes. Every day, thousands of Moroccans trudge past the deserted guard posts that separate this Spanish enclave from Morocco. The bundles of soap, clothes and oil they carry home for resale in Morocco are not an entirely legal traffic. But the Spanish authorities turn a blind eye, knowing how profitable this trade is to the city. This cross-border trade, though, is at odds with an old relationship built on mistrust and suspicions between Spain and Morocco over Ceuta. It goes back to the collapse of Muslim rule in Spain at the end of the 15th century, which for some gives the issue a religious dimension. <laughs> متنازع عن عليهما من قبل المغرب وإسبانيا، فالإسبانيين يريدون أن يضعوا أن يخلقوا من مدينة سبتة ومليديا مدينتين أوروبيتين، بل أكثر من ذلك لا يكتفون فقط في أن يكون في أن تكون هذه هذه المدينتين مدينتين إسبانيتين، بل يريدون أن تكون مدينتين مسيحيتين، وهذا هو الأخطر. El temor no está hacia el musulmán, el, el recelo no está hacia el musulmán, sino hacia el Estado de Marruecos que quiere anexionarse Ceuta. Ahí es donde los ceutíes somos intransigentes, no tanto en cuanto a la fusión de las poblaciones y al entendimiento, que es algo que además en Ceuta por propias condiciones geográficas vivimos de una manera muy intensa, sino que hay un temor porque Marruecos reivindica la soberanía sobre Ceuta que nosotros negamos rotunda y categóricamente. On the surface, Ceuta appears to be a harmonious, cosmopolitan city. But through the middle of it runs another wall, an invisible wall, that divides its 70,000 inhabitants along religious lines. Yes, <laughs> تقسم بين الشعب داخل مدينة سبتة وكما قلت آنفا أن المسيحيين بالخصوص الذين هم أغلبية يتقوقعون حول أنفسهم ولا يريدون أن يدخل معهم أي عنصر غير مسيحي فهذه هي الجدران وجدران التهميش هي أكثر من الجدران التي تضع على الأرض This is the impoverished hillside neighborhood of Principe Alfonso, whose disaffected inhabitants cite examples of official neglect, contributing to their poverty and despair. This is where half of Ceuta's Muslims live. And those Muslims who feel marginalized make no secret of where their allegiances lie. For every Friday they pray for the health and prosperity of the king, the king of Morocco. تهميش المسلمين يأتي من عدة أبواب الباب الأول هو عدم إعطاء لهم فرصة للعمل للعمل والشغل بدلا في البديل يعطون لهم عقود عمل 
لمدة قصيرة ثلاث أشهر أو ستة أشهر بينما لباقي المسيحيين يعطون لهم أعمال وأشغال قارة تضمن لهم البقاء والاستمرارية داخل هذه المدينة كذلك هناك تهميش ثقافي لأن يعني الثقافة المسيحية هي التي تطفو على سطح الواجهة في مدينة ستة بينما المسلمين الذين يؤدون لوازمهم الجبائية للبلدية It's a scene of first communion, or often played out in mainland Spain. The priest officiating doesn't see any divisions between Ceuta's Christians and Muslims. No, no hay verja. Al contrario, yo creo que las relaciones son muy positivas, en tanto sobre todo las relaciones humanas de todos los dirigentes espirituales de las distintas comunidades son muy cordiales. Y en todo momento, en aquello en que podemos, tenemos ocasión de saludarnos, de encontrarnos, dentro de un momento vamos a ir a la inauguración o reapertura de, de la sinagoga y seguramente que allí nos vamos a encontrar los diferentes credos y con mucha normalidad. No hay una valla. Cada uno expresa su fe, vive su fe, pero con mucha normalidad y naturalidad y libertad. The city of Sauta is Spain's footprint on the very northern tip of Africa, and for African migrants, the shortest way into Europe. To stop them, Europe has built a double barbed wire fence. It's a modern version of the Great Wall of China, and more recently, the Berlin Wall. While those walls relied on height and guards to keep outsiders at bay, the Spanish fence bristles with electronic surveillance gear but the purpose is the same. The fence it replaced much lower was too easily breached, with the result that, for the truly desperate, Sauter became a stepping stone into continental Europe. I came this way to find my way. I want to go to Spain. I have my mother my father, they all passed away, so I, I want to go Spain, so that if I if I be in Europe, I can I can survive on my own. In Gambia, I was having so many difficulties. Those who still chance their luck wait in the surrounding forests, but if caught, they're transported back to their countries of origin by the Moroccan authorities. Now, though, there are growing demands for a more constructive approach to bring about a lasting solution to the problem of illegal immigration. La, la, yo creo que la solución está en el entendimiento entre los países de origen. Yo creo que la solución está en que se hagan políticas eficaces en los países de origen, que se le ayude a esos países en, con ayudas económicas, con la condonación de la deuda externa, el desarrollo de sus propios países que no tengan que emigrar buscando un trabajo, que tengan seguridad en sus países. Pero hay que ver a las dos europeas más tempranas, las que en África como dos países más tempranas, que se vuelvan a ser parte de esas cosas que se han tomado de la África y se han puesto en las oficinas de trabajo y de trabajo. But to see those programs in action, one has to cross to mainland Spain, on the other side of the Mediterranean. This is the Bay of Cadiz, where on the 25th of October 2003, a local man was shocked by the sight of 35 male corpses washed ashore close to his home. Twelve of them were from the same Moroccan village. To see uh, the corpse of young people uh, here in the seaside, uh, for, for us it was a very uh, heavy experience.
When we found the dead people, we take our cars uh, with uh, our own money and we went to Morocco. We were to find uh, the people uh, from Hansala in Beni Meral because Beni Meral is a place with a high rate of immigration. And we decided to go there and to explain the risks of illegal immigration, advertising them that it causes uh, death. Rafael Quiros, who is a school teacher, decided to take action. He founded a charity called Solidaridad Directa to ensure that the little Moroccan village of Hamsala does not lose any more of its husbands and sons. He's constantly encouraging others to join him. In Solidaridad Directa, we all are uh, volunteers. Uh, we spend our own money, uh, we put uh, our cars uh, and our own work. We don't accept uh, official uh, uh, money, public money, uh, because we think that people have to change inside. When people change inside, is uh, able to change the world. And the change that Rafael and his charity is aiming to bring about is in the minds of Hansala residents, who still view migration as their only salvation, paying little attention to the well-known perils. Even uh, knowing that uh, cross uh, the Gibraltar, it was very dangerous, and that uh, many of their friends and parents uh, were dead because of that, some of the young people from Hansala wanted to cross uh, Gibraltar again. But what makes the approach of this charity so innovative is not its idealism, but its pragmatism in linking the economic interests of Spanish citizens with the well-being of those in a remote Moroccan village. It costs taxpayers in Spain 2,000 euros every time that a drowned man is sent back in a coffin. So far better to spend that in developing the migrant's place of origin, an adoption of sorts that others can emulate. We wanted to make from uh, Hamsala uh, a good place uh, to live, because uh, it is a good place uh, uh, to live. Uh, we have started building a small clinic, a classroom uh, for the children. Uh, we have started giving them uh, some uh, grass root uh, in order to uh, avoid that little children work in the, in the country uh, because we understood that it's better that little children uh, remain in the school learning. Uh, because if they are working in the country, it, there is a possibility that uh, uh, they try to emigrate again because they don't get enough money to live. But if they study, they have a possibility of developing uh, Hansala. This imaginative grassroots initiative is at odds with the fencing and policing approach favored by the European governments of fortress Europe. Sauter's barbed wire barrier may, for a time at least, stop the flow. But it does nothing to remove the enduring underlying causes. The frontiers uh, are uh, something artificial. Uh, and it, uh, at the end, it is not going to stop uh, the people. It is not going to stop immigration. It uh, can control illegal immigration, but it is not going to stop uh, it. In order to stop illegal immigration, we have to change our mentality. But uh, the mentality has to change too in Africa. Uh, because they, uh, in Africa, they have to understand that they have to work uh, protecting their own interests, developing their own economies. What Rafael Quiros urges is a radical shift in our thinking, the realization that walls don't work. 
sooner or later, uh, defense uh, in Ceuta is going down sooner or later because uh, fence, fences can't stop uh, people. Uh, from many years uh, ago up to now, people have emigrated and it's going to happen the same in the future. So uh, fences uh, are, uh, are not the solution. Uh, the solution is to open our heart because the main fence its place inside our heart. The film you've just seen was first broadcast almost 10 years ago, when the number of migrant deaths on Spanish territory had reached its peak. The world's media only started to take notice when the drowned bodies of African migrants began washing ashore on the tourist beaches of the Spanish Canary Islands. Spain's response was to stiffen its border security, but despite all the effort and expense spent on beefing up its borders, migration is on the rise. Migrants hoping to be among the lucky few to reach the other side have often rushed the border fence as shown in this CCTV footage released by the Spanish government. Sometimes the consequences are tragic. On one occasion in Ceuta in 2014, at least 14 African migrants drowned when trying to swim their way from Morocco to Spain. These pictures show Spanish border guards firing rubber bullets and smoke canisters towards survivors as they swim across the border. Those who made it alive were deported back to Morocco on the other side of the wall. A spokesperson from the Spanish Ministry of Interior said that shots fired weren't aimed at the swimmers and claimed their response was proportional. Today, this is no longer an issue isolated in a faraway Spanish enclave. The number of people hoping to reach Europe has swelled by a huge wave of refugees from wars in Syria Iraq and Afghanistan. Thousands of people are testing Europe's borders by the sea from Libya to Italy and from Turkey to Greece, and then continuing overland to Europe's more affluent countries. These scenes are from Hungary as refugees attempt to travel west. We are humans. Where the humanity? Where the world to see us? Look, everyone here, they are families. We don't need anything, just to cross. They are not acting as a human. They are just doing like an, an, an animal. This is not a human being. Go, 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 come on. In response, Europe is building more walls. Today, there are five existing fences across the continent with at least another six, either in construction or scheduled. Most of these walls separate EU nations from countries outside the Union, but some fences are planned between member states. A move that's against the spirit of the EU, according to the EU's foreign policy chief. Europe was built on the idea that walls have to fall down. Europe was built on the idea of coming together. There are more refugees and migrants traveling around the world, within Africa, within Asia, than those that are coming to Europe. This to say we have, as Europeans, to put things in perspective and to realize that it is not only a European phenomenon, it is a global move. Starting from wars, conflicts, poverty, natural disasters, climate change, it is the world that is going into that direction. People move out of desperation, out of hope, and we have to learn how to manage this. Without a political solution in sight, migrants and refugees remain undeterred, taking on increasingly dangerous routes into Europe. When we were in the boat, uh, in the sea, I was standing on one leg and raising my son on the other one, to, in order to get him up from the water because the water was still here. 